Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation. Well, it all started in the summer of 98. <laughs> the knock gun is bad. It's a sentiment you've undoubtedly heard of being thrown around the Guts and Black Powder community a handful of times, and it's not that hard to see why. It's a gun that deals heavy damage to whatever is in front of you, but at the cost of a horribly long reload, making this weapon useless. Or does it? Because in my opinion, the knock gun can actually be a, get this, decent weapon. So grab your volley gun and smite that poor shambler with 1750 damage halfway across the map, because today I'm speaking on behalf of the knock gun to prove that it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Also, quick heads up, this video contains opinions, so if you don't like opinions, might you click on this video? And by speaking in defense of the knock gun, I just mean, like, talking about it. I don't know, I think it's kind of good. Alright, you know the drill. The knock gun is a replacement weapon for the seaman that costs 350 francs. Think of it as a sort of musket blunderbuss hybrid. Fire 7 bullets out of its, well, 7 barrels, dealing 250 damage each, 1750 in total. And has amazing penetration, the same as the musket in fact, letting you kill 11 zombies with just one bullet, and 77 zombies with 7 bullets if you somehow find yourself in the perfect situation. The accuracy is also extremely good, being the same as the carbine. The knock gun also has its own unique mechanic, that being the knockback. The only scenario I can see this being useful in is when you're doing supply runs in Kaob, because the slowness effect while reloading doesn't stack when carrying supplies, so you can give yourself a couple of boosts to make your trip faster. For downsides, the knock gun has a big one. It's extremely long reload time, being 26 seconds long, 3.7 seconds per barrel. This is where the knock gun's hate comes from, and what most people point to to say the gun is useless. But what if I told you the reload time is a lie? It's actually 25 seconds, with an asterisk, because if you've used this weapon for any amount of time, you probably know about this one trick that makes the knock gun actually usable, the reload cancel. Basically, if you have at least one or more bullets loaded in the knock gun, you can left click to just cancel the reload, leaving you with however many bullets you've stopped it with. This allows you to load one bullet in just over 11 and a half seconds, which is pretty nuts. But taking advantage of this mechanic is really only the first step to becoming good with the knock gun. Okay, first off, don't load all 7 bullets. Seriously, don't. I understand the thought of fully reloading the knock gun and wiping out 60 or so zombies in a single shot, but let's face it, that's rarely ever gonna happen. I think the most zombies I've killed with this thing is like 30, which is really good, don't get me wrong, but I'm not kidding when I say I don't think I've ever come close to topping that because of how specific the situation needs to be. But that begs the question, how many should you load into the knock gun before firing? Well, it depends on the situation. If you're met with a small line of a couple zombies, then loading one to two should be good enough. Loading any more bullets into the knock gun is probably not a good idea unless you're playing on higher waves than endless. Secondly, please, please, PLEASE use your melee weapon. I see so many players using the knock gun almost exclusively and tossing the saber or hand axe to the side. Don't do this. Melee weapons are the most reliable form of damage in the entire game, and by neglecting them, you're not only doing a huge disservice to yourself, but more importantly, your team. Just because it's your primary doesn't mean it should be your primary source of damage. Capiche? Also, can we just give a huge thank you to our Fifers, everybody? Seriously, these dudes make your life 20 times easier, so if you see a Fifer on your team, protect them at all costs. Oh yeah, the knock gun is also incredible for taking out sappers. Like, it's, uh, it's kind of amazing at it. I usually load two bullets to make sure they die, but loading one can work, eh, sometimes. Plus, you can take them out at pretty much any range due to the accuracy being so great. In my opinion, this is the best use for the knock gun, being able to quickly take out zappers or igniters before going in to fight the rest of the horde. Now you may say something along the lines of Oh, but you can just bait the swings, you noob. You're a new gen. Hey guys, look, this dude's a new gen. And to that I say shut up. Listen, I have faith you know how to bait zapper swings, but sometimes you can be paired with some questionable individuals. Plus, quickly taking out the zapper instead of dancing around him for a few seconds will always be more efficient. You know, unless you aren't reloaded. But okay, look, remember how I said earlier that reloading one bullet in the knock gun takes 11 and a half seconds? Well, I can already hear another argument sprouting in the comments. 
just use the musket. And on paper, I'd agree with this. The musket reloads in 10 seconds flat, headshots exist, and it even has the bayonet, which is the strongest melee weapon in the entire game, with an asterisk. And they're giving that up for what? Better crowd control? The musket does its job just fine, so why would we need to spend a couple extra seconds just for a damage bonus we don't need? Well, firstly, landing headshots on multiple zombies at once can be a bit tricky, even if they are perfectly lined up. Secondly, I feel inclined to at least mention Hardcore because I personally think it's where the knockgun sees the most use. Because of the zombies increased health, sometimes the musket just can't take care of lines as easily, especially on later waves and endless, so why not use the stronger musket? I mean come on, it's only like a second and a half longer for 130 more damage. The loss of the bayonet hurts a bit, but like I said, you still have a saber, and it's not useless. If you do want slightly better damage, you can use the hand axe I guess, but I'm not really a fan of the decreased range, so I won't be using it. Uh, is that it? Uh, I guess it is. Yeah, just use the knock-on on Hardcore, it's really good. Maps are something that should also be taken into account when using the knock-on. I'm just going to list off different maps and rate them from 1 to 10 on how well the gun performs on them. I'm going to be as quick as possible when rating these maps, alright? Alright. Bardo Objective. Tight hallway-ish area in the middle of the map that can be used to kill large hordes, but because you won't be there for long and the extra damage isn't really needed to kill bombers, running the pistol would probably be better. Who knows though, because it looks like it's getting a revamp. 3 out of 10. Leipzig. Not a lot of tight areas, but a decent amount of long ones. If the graves get overrun by zombies, falling back and blasting the last few stragglers can feel pretty good. Other than that, it's alright. 6 out of 10. Catacombs. Hands down, the best objective map to use it on. Lots of tight hallways and a large open area at the finale. This thing is a beast on catacombs. 9 out of 10. San Sebastian. It works pretty good on this map. A good amount of large areas and some tight ones spread throughout. 7 out of 10. Kalb. Eh. It's meh. Not a lot of tight hallways unless you count the 30 seconds where you push the cart across the bridge. Plus the blunderbuss works so much better during the finale. 4 out of 10. Pokemon. Nothing like taking out 4 zombies every 18 seconds while sitting in the back of your team. In all seriousness, it works pretty well when camping on Pokemon. 6 out of 10. Bardo Endless. I'm not really sure what to say about this one. The zombies that spawn near this general area will walk around the entire edge of the map before jumping down into this hallway for some reason, meaning most of the zombies will end up here, making for some easy kills like 50% of the time. I don't know. I think the blunderbuss would work better here. Guess I'll have to play on it a bit more. 4 out of 10. La Ferme. Eh. It's pretty good in that one camping spot. 6 out of 10. And now, for my favorite map to use the knock gun on. La Haye. Now you may be thinking, Well alright, La is a decent map, but what makes it your favorite to use the knock gun on? Simple answer, this ladder. When camping the lofts of the barn, zombies only have one way to get to you. This one tiny ladder that they get stuck on for a second. So if you have a sapper who actually knows what they're doing, BOOM! They're gone. The loft is also extremely tight, so if the zombies push you back at all, you can still mow them down in a single shot if you're lucky. This one spot on the map makes it an automatic 10 out of 10 for me. I don't care. 1984. Shut up. Now there's one more thing I'd like to talk about before I bring this video to a close, and that is the blunderbuss. Why use the knock gun when you have the well, better knock gun? And to that I say, consistency. The blunderbuss has limited range, sometimes, and the bullet spread can really screw you over. When I use the blunderbuss, I go from thinking, wow, this thing is overpowered and needs a nerf, to you're telling me I shot at that huge horde of zombies and only killed two. The blunderbuss specializes in crowd control, and the knockgun specializes in taking out tanky lines of enemies, okay? And uh, well, that's everything. That's all I wanted to talk about regarding the knockgun. I may have made some mistakes somewhere, and if I did, please make sure to comment below, but before I go, I have a special little announcement to make. Discord. Yeah, that's right, I have a Discord now. I'm mainly going to use it to host events and just hang out with my community, so if that sounds interesting to you, consider pressing the link in the description or pinned comment. But with that said, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you'd be so kind, and this is me, signing out. Goodbye.